Hey friendos, Ash here with GentSense. Hope that you're doing well. Not too long ago, I did a video where I took a look at the best flankers from 10 huge fragrance lines. And during that video, I said I was gonna do another one, which is this one, where I go over some of the worst flankers from 10 huge fragrance lines. So the rules for this, pretty much the same as the best flankers list, uh, obviously, if they're flankers, it can't be the original. So even if the original fragrance in the line is possibly the worst one, can't feature it because it has to be a flanker. And it also has to be a fragrance that is at least moderately easy to pick up. So with that in mind, let's jump into it. 10 of the crappiest flankers from some huge lines. And guys, I'll once again give you those codes very quickly. LuckyScent.com, the code is 10 gents. That'll get you 10% off the website. Not gents 10, 10 gents. And don't be surprised if it changes again next month. And then TwistedLily.com and MaxAroma.com, gents 10. Same thing, 10% off. And actually some of you guys said, uh, hey, you know, we live in Europe. Could you maybe see about getting a code from Notino? And I will try. No, no guarantees, but I'll reach out and see if they want to give you guys a little something, something. If they do, I'll let you know. If they tell me to blow it out my backside, I'll also let you know. First, Dolce & Gabbana is the one. Pretty massive fragrance line. This fragrance, the, the worst flanker, jumped into my mind right away. Gotta be this one. The one sport. They're gonna be kind of a recurring theme here. But the one sport, yes, I have a massive bottle. The 150 mil size bottle. You might look at that and say, well, man, you got a huge bottle. You probably at least like it a little bit. No, I actually got this from FragranceNet when they had some crazy, stupid, cheap price on it. Didn't own the fragrance, so I was like, well, you know, heck with it. It's one of the one fragrances, and I think I paid something like $25 for it. Now, don't expect to find it for that price right now, but years ago when I picked this up, that's what it was going for. So what's wrong with the one sport? Well, everything. Uh, the performance is complete trash. It lasts next to no time. It's just about like spraying a slightly scented water on your skin, but it's water that has a slight astringent citrus to it. And it doesn't even smell very nice, frankly. You know, it, it doesn't even have a pleasant citrus that lasts for 10 minutes. It can't even give you that. The One Sport is absolute trash. Everything about it sucks. The performance sucks. The fragrance itself sucks. There's a reason this stuff isn't really around anymore because it's horrible. Let's keep it in that sport realm next up with Prada Luna Rosa. What's the worst flanker you might ask? I think it's this one. Oh, sport. It's so generic, they didn't even really give it its own proper name because they already had Lunarosa Sport. And then they came out with this and they're like, ah, what is this trash? I don't know, O oh, Sport or something. Who cares? But we already have Sport. It doesn't matter. This one is O oh, Sport. And the fragrance does come across like the most generic take on Luna Rosa that Prada could have came up with. Now, don't get me wrong, it's completely wearable. It, it's not offensive. It is clean. It smells way better than the One Sport and way better than some of the other fragrances we're gonna talk about here today. But when you're talking about the Luna Rosa line, it's pretty easily the worst one. You can tell this is a black sheet because they gave it a different bottle size, which I know is not a big deal. But when you have the whole collection lined up, and they're all the same size. And then you've got this derpy one sticking out a little bit skinnier, a little bit taller, looking awkward. You're like, what are you doing here even? What's wrong with you? Why can't you be like all your brothers? I mean, the reason that they gave it the bigger bottle is because it's O Sport. So you would think, you know, it's a little weaker. You spray a little bit more of it on. So they're giving you a little extra. But I just think the whole thing is kind of bunk. Yeah, it doesn't work. All the other Luna Rosas are better. After that, a fragrance from Jimmy Choo, part of their man line, Jimmy Choo Man Blue. Now to be fair to Jimmy Choo Man Blue, this fragrance at the price you can pick it up for from discounters is a solid blue scent for guys that don't wanna to spend too much money because it does give you that versatility, that potential compliment factor, that ease of use, but at a lower price point and from a house that people are gonna recognize. You say Jimmy Choo, people know what that is. So don't take this as me dumping on Jimmy Choo Man Blue and saying it's uh, utter garbage. I think for the price, like I said, it works really well for a lot of people or would work really well for a lot of people. But in the entire Jimmy Choo Man line, when we're talking just the flankers, I think it's the worst one. I would rather have Jimmy Choo Man Intense 
I think that actually would probably be a better blue fragrance choice overall for me between that one and this one. Jimmy Two Man Ice is a really, really good fragrance. Maybe the best one in the line because that gives you a similarity or similar feel to Dior Homme Cologne, but for way less. And the new Jimmy Two Man Aqua, I think I would take over this one, especially as the price on that one drops down. So Jimmy Two Man Blue, it's fine as a cheap, blue fragrance, cheap, versatile fragrance. But for the lineup, I got to say it's the worst one, I think. Now we're going with the scent from Hugo Boss. It's got to be the scent Pure Accord. I hate this stuff. Like Jimmy Two Man Blue, I get it for the price. No problems. This right here, ugh, disgusting. Now, some people really dig this. Some people like the change that Pure Accord did to the scent, but I just really have never jived with this. I, I don't enjoy the smell. It's a little bit sickly smelling, even a little bit feminine leaning. I was actually really excited for this one. I like the scent. I like the line, especially Private Accord, Lip Parfum, Parfum Edition. Those are solid, absolute, really good. And I was pumped to see what they would do with a, a warm weather take on that DNA. And then I found out and then I was not pumped. Next, let's talk about Halloween. And I think uh, Halloween, I'm gonna have to go with this one. Halloween Tattoo Man. It was between this and Halloween Man Rock On. Halloween Man Rock On basically smells like a, like a cheaper version of Abercrombie and Fitch Fierce. So it's kind of like that Montblanc legend kind of idea where you, you give a fragrance that smells like fierce, but for way less. That's what it is. This one is sweet. It's warm. I think it has a martini note in it. It doesn't smell exactly like another fragrance out there. Like rock on is much closer to fierce. This is kind of 1 million ish, but not really. So why this one over rock on? Well, actually it just comes down to the bottle. Yeah, this bottle this looks like a, a sixth grader threw up an Ed Hardy fever dream on the bottle. Just skulls and roses and, and butterflies. It's so stupid looking. Fragrance itself, it's not bad. You know, get this for cheap. But, you know, we, we got to pick the worst of the lineup. What are you going to do? Stronger with you up next. And uh, this one I don't dislike. I actually think this smells really nice. But again, I think this is probably the worst of the line. Uh, stronger with you only. It's a nice uh, warm weather take on the Stronger With You DNA. You know, it's got that sweetness in there. It has that little gourmand edge that you expect from the fragrances. But when I really thought about it, I would take Stronger With You Intensely, absolutely. I would take Freeze. I would take uh, Leather, Oud, all those over this. So that's it. I mean, the fragrance DNA just is, is better made for cool weather scents. And that makes sense because the original Stronger With You is a fall wintertime fragrance. So the original one was constructed around that idea. And then if we're talking about the fragrances that are more for warm weather or leaning a little more toward warm weather, it'd be this one in Freeze. And I think Freeze is a little more interesting. I like the opening of that one more. So even though this one I like, and I would say out of everything in today's video, it might be my favorite, either favorite or second, but I think my favorite for the line, which is a strong line of fragrances, stronger with you line of fragrances. This one is uh, my choice, but let me know if you think differently. So we go from a couple of fragrances that I think are actually pretty good and stronger with you only, I think is very nice to just an abomination. Yeah, just uh, an absolute, just an affront to humanity, something that uh, awakens me in the night, having night terrors, you know, stuck to my bed, can't move, paralyzed, thinking about this fragrance. I mean, not really, obviously, but it does suck. <laughs> it's Cesaro Chrome Under the Pole. Under the Pole does nothing well, nothing. Except the bottle, actually. The bottle looks pretty slick, so it does that well. I like that blue, that's a good look. The fragrance does not smell really pleasant, but the worst part of the fragrance, other than the terrible performance, is, as I have mentioned a number of times, the grotesque sticky white globules that come out of this atomizer. Well, when you spray it on, it, it does leave this like sticky residue. And if you spray in the crook of your elbow, for example, then even uh, much later on after the fragrance is dried, if you do this with your arm, it will stick. It'll do like a kind of deal every time you, you move your arm. And it's because with this fragrance, they went without uh, your typical perfumer's alcohol. They're trying to do something that is more earth forward, uh, more natural, which is respectable. But the way that it's pulled off here is just so bad, so poor. And it's almost bad that they did it like that because then people that do buy that, especially if they buy it at retail, 
are gonna go, ho oh, ho, dude, I am never buying something like that again. So as soon as they see something else advertised that maybe pulls it off a little bit better, yeah, you're not gonna go for it because of this. From there, we hop over to Azaro's Wanted. And this is, once again, their warm weather fragrance, uh, Wanted Tonic, I think is far and away the worst in the Wanted line. Wanted by Night, the Most Wanted, and the Most Wanted Parfum. Those are all cool weather fragrances, and they do it very well. And this is another one where I was excited for it. I was excited to see how it would smell because they were coming out with a warm weather fragrance, you know, a great spring, summertime scent, great daytime fragrance. Azaro Wanted Tonic comes out and just craps the bed. The problem with this one is that it smells very cheap. It smells very boring, very generic. It's just a run of the mill gym fragrance or hop out of the shower and, and spray it on fragrance for high heat situations. There's nothing about this that's memorable. Like this is the type of scent that I would smell and then 15 minutes later forget how it smelled because nothing about it is, is worth remembering. Now, as I said, Wanted by Night, The Most Wanted, The Most Wanted Parfum. Those are really good. Good performance, great versatility for cool weather, big time compliment factor from those fragrances. This one just has none of that. Wanted Tonic, hard pass, easily the worst flanker in the Azara Wanted line. And then we've got Bulgari, Bulgari Man, and I'm gonna have to go with this one. Glacial Essence. A lot of people dislike this one. I don't know that I think it's as bad as some people say, like some people really, really hate this. I think it's uh, it's okay. I think it's better than Wanted Tonic, better than Under the Pole, better than O Sport, better than the One Sport, better than Pure Accord. Maybe kind of that's where it sits for me, actually, kind of right there in the middle of this video. But it's not that bad. It's not, it's not too bad. If you pick it up for an okay price, I think it's fine. I know a lot of people would say maybe Terra Essence, that that would be worse than Glacial Essence, but I find Terra Essence to be of interesting i like the way it smells i think between the two glacial essence is easier to pull off easier to wear but if i were going to just keep one it would be terra essence so that's why glacial essence is in this list but it's not terrible and last the eve saint laurent y line huge line of fragrances sadly it's got to be this one why oh fresh because uh, when i compare this to the other flankers why eau de parfum why Le Parfum, why Live? I would probably take any of those over this one. And it's not that this smells bad, the quality is actually good, maybe higher than any other fragrance in this list today, other than possibly stronger with you only, they're pretty close. I like what it does, I've worn this a decent amount. Again, this is just one of those deals. Worst flanker, I gotta go with this one. Because I think that the strong points of why Eau de Parfum, why Le Parfum, and why Live are stronger than the strong points of Why Eau Fraiche. Some people would say Why Live is probably the worst, but Why Live for me has been just an insane attention grabber. One of my most consistently complimented fragrances, even though it does have kind of like an Invictus meets Why kind of vibe going on, but it's done so well for me with that that I can't ignore that. And so that's why it gets the the selection over Y.O. Fresh, and that's why Y.O. Fresh wraps up this list of the worst flankers in 10 huge lines. And I have harped on this and harped on this, but let me drive it home. Again, I don't actually dislike all the fragrances here. Some of them I do. The ones that I told you I really dislike them, I really, really, really dislike those. But the other ones I don't actually hate, it's just the other ones in their line or maybe a little bit stronger. All right, guys, that will do it for me here today. Thank you for hanging with me. Actually, don't overly like doing videos like this. I mean, sometimes I like to get it out on some of these fragrances that just really, really uh, do everything horribly. But it doesn't make me feel good to have to put a couple of these in this list, you know. But it is what it is. I'm gonna head out of here. Thank you for hanging with me. Stay safe out there. I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you later.